Hello, everybody. Uh, let's see if I can share. I've forgotten how to do this now. Okay, it looks like we're on. Right, let's get this put in the holder. Right, I know that some places it's still half term, so I don't know if that means you'll be able to watch or not watch. So we'll see what happens. So today I'm going to be using quite a few items from March's kit um, and showing you how they can look. So I've got one of the papers from the kit. This is the Seven Dots one from the Nature Walk. Um, so this is largely black with this feature up at the top here. Um, I've got the black gesso and some of the marble paste. You get a little pot in your kit. We're going to try those out. We're going to use the paints as well. We have got the stencil and the chipboards. Hello, Lorna. Um, I'm going to use the stamp as well from the kit. Um, and then I've got a few other things. Oh, I've got some of the flowers as well. So, first of all, um, we're going to work on the background. So, let's see. I think I'll start with stamping first. Now, black is, is interesting. There's more shades of black than one, which sounds stupid, but this isn't a very bold black. If, does that make sense? It's more kind of... See, this is black, and that's black, but this seems much brighter. Does that Does that make sense? I hope so. And then I've got white ink as well. It's black leads itself naturally for me to white as well. So this will allow us by using white to um, oops, create a base for other colours to go on top of. So I'm going to just start by using the stamp. Um, by doing stamping on a background of a layout you can... Um, sort of create the shape you're looking for so you can use the stamp to create that so i'm gonna oops sorry knock you i'm gonna start by using the white ink to build the kind of shape i want for my layer i'm not using a block because i don't mind it not being perfect okay. it's quite a new stamp so i need to kind of prime it first in a bit more I did get some black ink on that so it's a bit dirty my white okay that's going better now okay so just building the kind of structure of the layout I suppose you could say deciding on a shape we've got this shape up here already from the layout so we need to decide if we're keeping that uncovered or we're going to go on to it a bit okay so that's some white Let's also have some black now on top of that. So I'll just clean my stamp a little bit. Let's get some um, kitchen roll. Now you'll see what I mean about the black. Let's 
So I see this black of the ink is much brighter than the page. So black isn't always just black for starters. So that's the interesting thing about black. You can have shades, you know, you've got white as well. So you can have greys. Um, you can create different finishes. You can have matte and shiny. And I think black's really interesting to use. Okay, so you could do this with any stamp, this idea. I'm just using the one from the kit to show you how nice it is. I really like it. Okay, let's just put that back. So that's something nice. I'm going to use the marble paste next, I think. And then we'll use some of the paints at this stage. Whoops. Where did that go? Always doing that when I put stamps away, knocking the um, plastic off. Excuse my head. Let's try that again. <laughs> Better. Right. So that's that. Get the marble paste so we'll get the stencil now so we've got bubble stencil in this kit you can use any stencil um for mixed media i would recommend going with the slightly thicker ones you know sturdier ones this is quite thin but at the same time it's strong so this is more than fine for mixed media some are more designed just for ink so just kind of check out how they feel is the best way to just check. Okay, so I'm going to go with some of the marble paste. You can hear that straight away. Oh, hi, Emma. I'm good, thank you. Are you? Did you... I'm getting confused. Did you have your birthday, Emma? Yes, I think it was Emma. I get confused. I know quite a few Emmas. I'm sure it was you, Emma. <laughs> I hope. And I didn't dry my ink there, so I just smudged it a little bit, but that's okay. I can live with that. Right. I'm going to follow the same lines, I think, with the bubbles over the top. So it's super, super gritty. You can just hear all that particles in there. Whoops. So we'll get some real dimension with this paste. Just hear it. That's quite satisfying, that noise. <laughs> I'm just laying it on quite thick because we want this texture to cling as much as we can. So I'm leaving it on thick. Okay, so it leaves that texture behind. And then we'll use it again. And then we can just scrape the other direction what's left. And this would be good to just use on 3D pieces, like home decor, like say a box or something, just to cover it in to start with as a base layer to get some nice texture. So that looks quite cool. I think we'll have a tiny bit here as well. And then we can scrape off what's left. You did. Yes, and you got engaged. What a lucky lady. Well, not lucky, but what a lovely time, I mean. 
yes i'm really happy for you nice to have happy things going on right, i'm just gonna move that while i just clean my stencil a little bit so i'll just bring back that kitchen roll have you set dates or you've not discussed any of that yet i know it's very early days have you been doing any shopping like ideas Very exciting. Nice to have nice news. I've had heard quite a lot of sad news from people lately, so it's nice to have happy news. And uh, this stencil cleans very nicely, actually. But um, whatever that's made of, it's nice. So I can just roll that up now and get rid of that. Oops, I'm sorry, I keep whacking the camera today. The phone. And we'll just wipe that off as well. And we'll give that a good dry now. Let's clean my table up. Let's bring that back. Ooh, where did I put my heat gun? Ooh, I think I've left the heat gun somewhere. That is not good, is it? Right, excuse me a minute, ladies. I just need to grab my heat gun. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Sorry about that, I left it on my desk. No dates yet, but you bought a magazine. <laughs> like Monica. Oh, that would be cool. That would be fun. Right, now we have the heat gun. So we've got different shades, again with the white, because the ink is not bright white, but the paste is bright. We've got the different black tones. So it's looking quite interesting already. And then we can decide what we want to do next. We're going to colour with some paints. I think what I'm going to do is maybe water down some of the paints at this stage. And splash them about a bit over the stamping and the paste. And this is very heavy, this paste. So it will warp our page a little bit um, while we're drying. But we can flatten that down again later. It's not a problem. And we'll just dry from both sides today. Hello, Kate. We're just doing a mixed media layout today using uh, lots of items that are coming up in the March kit. So I've started off using the stamp from the kit with um, some black and white ink, and we've just used the stencil and the marble paste from the kit. And the amount you've got in your pot there would easily do this amount of stenciling, I reckon a couple of times. So you get a couple of projects like that. Or if you want to use it to cover something, maybe one big project. And actually it surprisingly dries quickly. That is, that is pretty much dry. I thought it was going to be one of those things... You know that we'd need to leave for a while but that that's almost dry it's pretty good okay so the colors of the paint in the kit we've got violet which you've seen me use a couple of times now we've got turquoise and then we've got the bounty which is slightly darker i thought we'd use all three today 
Do you think all three or should we stick to the green tones? But then I pulled out some purple flowers and might add as well as the white flowers. Do you think all three? All three tones or stick to the green tones? What do you reckon, ladies? What do you reckon on the paints? All three or just the green tone? Should we open them up so you can have a look? So this is turquoise. Okay. This is violet. And this is bounty. So this is more green, turquoise is bluey green. So I'm going to start with uh, Bounty. And I'm going to get, I'm going to use the lids from the paint. And I'm going to get it quite wet. So I'm just adding... I'll show you in a minute. Just add in water to the lid. I can actually use my mister in here. Okay, so I'm just watering down this paint. And we're gonna, we'll do some splashes. Oops, that was a bit of a big splash. Anything you don't like, just grab a baby wipe or kitchen towel. And just smush that around instead. Because we'll do that in a minute. And it's looking nice and sparkly. So I'm sticking mainly to the shape I've created with the stamps and the stenciling. Just going out slightly. Then we'll add a bit more water and we'll use this local wash. Purple and green. Okay, we'll use all, all colours. So I'm just using this like a wash now, like a watercolour. Just trying to be careful around that marble paste because it's still, it's not perfectly dry yet. We don't need to worry too much about this bit because we'll be building on top of this. And I plan to use the paints later, so I, I don't want to cover too much of what we've created. Let's pour that into the... Make sure what colour I'm using. Yes. <laughs> I want to put the paint into the wrong pot. Okay. So you can just see the sparkle of that paint. Look, even on the... I hope that the uh, the shine of the paint is picking up nicely for you. That's watered down even, that's not even used pure. So we'll go with the turquoise next. So that was Bounty. So we'll do the same again. I will use my water sprayer though. You can see this is more on the blue. The bounty has more of a green gold tone. This is on more of the blue side of the scale. This is kind of a more silvery tone. 
undertone. That one has more of a gold undertone. And we don't want to completely cover the paste or the stenciling. Hello, Mum. <laughs> and we'll water it down now and use it like a wash again. Whoops. Colour my thumb. Oh, that's very cold. <clears throat> So just remember that everything goes through an ugly stage, we say. So you have to have an open mind of what it will look like. And now let's dry that a little bit because it's getting quite wet and then we'll use the other colour. And it's so shiny and it looks like it's showing quite well on the camera. And then if we've lost anything, we want to bring back some more of that stamp and we can always go back and add some more of that later on. Uh, if you've got any really, really wet bits, you can tap those off with some kitchen roll. Just blot it off a bit. Okay. All right, let's go for our last color. Scrape a bit of that out. Whoops. So these three colours are the colours you'll get in the kit, um, each lovely on their own or you can use in combination. I tried to pick three colours I thought went nice together. Uh, I think you could make a nice cosmic key sort of background with these colours as well. I haven't decided about this bit yet, what to do with that. Okay, I'm going to go for wash. And you could um, mix these colours if you want to create your own sort of custom tones that would be nice yeah, if I put the pot of paint it's hiding under here somewhere so I'm pleased that those water down nicely but still remain quite vibrant that's a good sign of a paint for me shows that their quality so they're very pigmented that means so let's give this a good dry do I want to just get this moving a little bit and um, obviously here where I've got wet make sure that your ink is archival if you remember not so long ago, I didn't use my archival ink, so that started running everywhere. And um, the stress range is not archival, it's water-based. So by all means use it. I do use, I love my oxides, um, but just remember that. So 
it, you need to be very controlled and perhaps a bit more uh, experienced with them. Um, okay, so I'm building a nice background here. This is looking good. I think what I might do is add my wording up here or something later to cover that. Right, we're going to start building up our layers now. So we're going to bring in our chipboard. Once this is dry. It's super shiny. I'm really, really loving the paints. So I've left some black peeking through. I've left some white of the paste. We'll just blot this a bit, get it drying quicker. Right, we'll put that to one side whilst we prepare our chipboard. So I'm going to go for the chipboard in black. So here is the chipboard pack you get. They're very long. Whoops, with all my cogs on there. They're almost 12 by 12 in length. So they're nice big, and sorry, they're not chipboard, they are MDF, they are 3 mil MDF. Okay, so let's see how nicely they pop out. Whoops, being MDF, they're a bit sturdier, so they pop out nicely. And do not throw away this bit, because you can chop that up as well and use that. I love the smell of MDF where it's been burned, you know, the cutting. Okay, so it does break. So it's thin enough you can break it, but thick enough it won't break unless you want it to, if that makes sense. Let's keep those for another piece. Put that over there. So put these on here. You can use a saw someone doing um adding paint and gesso with a sponge onto their their wooden MDF. And I thought well, that's quite a good idea. So just roughly coating. This is just so one we're coloring it because it's black we don't want the wood color and also to give something for our paints or our ink or any wet mediums we want to add to stick to it gives it toothless that's what they call it so it gives like a chalky finish it acts as a barrier so it stops stuff soaking in so you don't waste um your inks or paints um and that also means it keeps the colour more true. So when stuff kind of soaks in, you lose, you lose like its colour, especially if it's sort of metallic and things. It just doesn't look right. Um, so gesso is a very important tool if you're wanting to use anything like this. give another coat a quick coat just to darken it a little bit not being precise just so it you know as long as it's mostly covered so it's got something to stick to then we'll be happy What are you all up to today? You've been enjoying the sun? Oh, hasn't it been lovely? I sat in the park whilst I was waiting to go home yesterday and I actually fell asleep. It was so warm. It was lovely. 
you've been catching the sun at all or have you been stuck inside working I managed to get some time with the sun knowing our weather it probably won't last so <laughs> make the most of it Now we want to make sure that this is properly dry at this point because once we start adding more wet mediums, if our gesso isn't dry, um, well a few things will happen. It will start to blend with the whatever you're adding on top and create a muddy, horrible colours and also you're going to take it back off the wood so it's not going to do its job and you'll end up with bare wood showing through again. So yeah, once you want to add something wet on top, make sure your gesso is dry, be that you put gesso on paper or whatever it is. And gesso doesn't take very long to dry, so it's, you haven't got to wait long. Okay. We'll bring back our piece now and see how we want these to look. If anyone has any questions at any point, do shout. Okay. So we're going to use these now. I hope um, you see the potential a bit more of these, Lorna, perhaps. I thought they were great for building on top of. Um, we're going to use these as like a building blocks, if you like, to build our layer on top of. So we want to make sure we don't put them too much in the centre, as we'll lose all of that. Um, we want some bits to be near the edge and a base in the middle. We can then build our, our um, piece on top of. So those scraps will be, again, good to build... Um, our construction on top of I'm going to use is cardboard and like bits of packaging are great to keep for that as well so what I'll do is put this here for then the photo or whatever I use on top of hi Claire oh yes I've got washing on the line as well yeah, definitely bike ride is a great idea in this weather. Yeah, we've got to make the most of it, definitely. Okay, let's see. So, something like this, I think. Right, and to stick that down, I'm going to use my 3D gloss gel. If I can get it open. Ooh. Obviously didn't clean around the tub properly last time. Oh, that is stuck. Oh, there we go. Cool. That was a bit tough. Okay. So I'm just going to dab. It's not very heavy, so we don't need to be covering this, you know, in masses of gel. Um, just be aware of obviously the marble paste you might need a bit extra where that is so that it sticks on top of all that texture and it does dry clear so don't worry too much okay let's pop a bit more of that there we go. Okay. And if you don't want that there, the excess, you can just wipe that away. Okay. I plan on, well, I've got going to sort out some storage in the garage after I've got rid of um, lots, all my boxes. I managed to pick up some filing cabinets really cheap. So I've got all the boxes into those. Um, 
I'm getting rid of some plastic drawers as well, which my brother's going to have. So I need to clear those out before we go and visit him at the weekend. So that's one boring job to do. But I will reward myself with some time in the sun. <laughs> it's starting to get bright here now. It's been really chilly this morning, but it's getting nice now. So I'm just tapping with my palette knife on the back some of this gel. Went a bit mad there, so let's just wipe some of that off. And it's not, like I say, it's not very heavy, this MDF. So as long as some points are stuck to the page, I'm not too concerned. Right, it's starting to take shape now. That needs to move there a little bit and I need to stick down this end. Oops. Oops. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> I'm going to stick that card in the middle to fill that base. I'm just putting a bit of gel on the back just to stick it to the car, uh, the MDF. We, we need to be a bit patient here. I don't think that's the best thing to use, actually. That cardboard isn't very thick. Let's use a bit of the um, scraps of the chip, the MDF. I keep calling it chipboard. I'm so used to using chipboard. Let's just use a corner of this instead. this that card was too thin it just wasn't behaving and we'll just stick this down with a nice blob of gel and that's going to give us the height and something to bounce on for our own picture and whatever Make sure we're happy that that is stuck enough. Okay, right. Next. Let's get rid of all these little bits out of the way. Put this back over there. Now, what next is on the agenda? Okay, I had these little square things I picked up when I went to a class the other week. I thought they might go nicely with this layout. Let's have a look at some. So these are all kind of musicy ones. Or oh, we've got a pack that's more nature. I think the nature ones maybe with the sparkly stuff that's going on mm. I'm in love with that design but I like the real black so let's go back to the other pack 
that's quite cool. these pictures better but I want I like the black mm, let's see oh no that actually goes quite well oh, we've got this one oh what about this one yeah this so that or Or this. Which one? That one. So we'll call that A or B. A or B. What do you reckon, ladies? This is A. We can have B. See, I like the... This one doesn't want to stick. It's being very naughty. I like the colour of that, but the picture of that. <laughs> I'm awkward. Let's just go with that. I thought it's the right colour. Okay. So let's stick that on because I'm confident with how everything looks around at the moment and it's not going to get in the way. So I'll just use that gel again. And now I've got my nice MDF base and we've covered that all up with a photo so you'll never know that's underneath. Yeah, I think so too. The colours are better, aren't they? It's more that dark colour we're after. Okay, so now we need to look at the sort of embellishments if we like. Okay, so I've got a few things. So in your kit, you've got um, some cogs. I've got some cogs, but different ones. Oops. Well, I have got some silver. I could just go straight for the silver. I'm being lazy. Although I don't know how many of those I've got. That's a silver, that's a silver. But I don't have another silver. <laughs> so I think we'll have to gesso them. Okay, so we'll come over here again. Let's put some cogs down. I like odd numbers and I like threes. Threes is a number I tend to work in a lot. So let's do nine. So I'll put this away a second. I'll bring this in. And I've got some of those clay pieces I made up of there as well. We could add some little ones from there. So what should we use? They're a bit bashed up. They weren't perfect. These could look quite good. It's very, very brittle. There's a really rubbishy clay I had left. Um, let's go for those. Okay. So do those at the same time. Uh, let's also add some. These are melange pebbles from Prima. You can also use. Oh, I have a tub that's stuck. Oh man, why is this tub stuck? You can also use those um, glass beads you get for like decorating vases and stuff. Oh yeah, I remember why now. I used the lid to put gel in. 
and these will go nicely with that pattern of the um of the stencil which is a bubble we're going to cover all these in black gesso and then we'll let the paint do its magic again I want a sort of smaller ones this time so we've got lots going on so we don't want anything that's too big so we've got all these elements to add what are we doing for time we're coming up to nearly an hour so we'll be winding down soon and um, let's take some of those flowers as well on the kit they're just plain white flowers Take three of those as well. I'm going to give these all a quick coat of gesso. I'm not going to completely cover the flowers just to give different tones. So let's bring in our gesso. And gesso on the pebbles is really cool because they're plasticky. So by gessoing, you can then go in with your paints. Uh, I could have brought the new waxes in to show you those. Waxes look really great on the little pebbles. Well, and the clay and metals, they just, you know, they shine and they give a nice texture as well. And there's the other one. I'll say I had another one somewhere. Whoops. Okay, and then the cogs. These are a really horrible gold shiny colour at the moment. So we'll get rid of the colour and also the shininess, which will allow stuff to stick to it easily. Whoops. And then it will be sticking it all on. You've also got some nice flowers in your kit and that leaf vine. Those would be great to add. Um, I chose black and white flowers already, so you don't need to do anything to them if you don't want to. Um, but you could splash some inks on those, that would look nice. Or water down the paint like I did. And flick a bit of that on I'm not being too careful here I don't want you to wait forever either so you could go in with another coat if you want to I'm not going to do that today I want you to wait forever So the dress I'm using today is the one in your kit. So this is the Fabrica Decoru one. And as I said before, it's it's not as thick as Prima, but it's it's certainly fine. Um I you know, I wouldn't work with it. I wouldn't I wouldn't sell something I'm not happy with either. Um and you know, for the price and the amount you get, it's it's absolutely brilliant. It's got a nice uh, texture to it, like a consistency. I mean, there's no texture to it. It's a gesso, but it's uh, it's certainly not the thinnest I've used. That's for sure. It's I'd say it's it's like a medium thickness. <laughs> it's not the thickest, but it's certainly nowhere near the thinnest. I've used some really cheap gesso that's. You know, you need a good few layers of. Well, I've put one layer on this clay and it's it's fine. So I think if you want to try out a bit of a cheaper one, this is great. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, and then not full coverage, just a few 
flicks on the flowers. So kind of a dry brushing. So I'm just putting a bit on my brush and then wiping it off. Okay. Give that a dry. <clears throat> and then this is where we'll see the magic happen in a minute. Yes, gesso should feel chalky. Um, that's the nature of it. Um, it should have a, a chalky, a kind of gritty feel to it. That's what makes things then cling to it. Um, it shouldn't be glossy. Um, that would defeat the object of it. Um, yes, it should have a bit of bite to it. Um, you should be able to run your hand on it and f know it's there, if you know what I mean. Uh, that means it's doing its job. <laughs> Just be careful when doing this that you're not going to burn your fingers. You know, some people like to use um, tweezers or something and make sure what you're heating on isn't going to melt so don't melt your plastic tablecloths no no it should have a kind of feel you should be able to feel it you should be able to notice it um, so that's what gesso's for it's, you want it to make things stick to it so it needs a bit of bite to it. If it's if there's not, then I'd be a little bit worried. <laughs> that means it's not gonna stick things to it. Okay, so let's get rid of that. We'll bring back our layout. So we're at the final stages now. We're adding our embellishing. We're gonna add some words and maybe some more flowers. Those purple flowers I showed you at the beginning. The purple flowers were actually in the Halloween kit. I need to, I'll probably have to go away and oops, stick this chipboard on better after. I just need to hold it while it dries. Yeah, it's been a pain. It's because of the marble paste underneath. Um, it's struggling to stick. What we'll do is stick a nice big blob under the photo. And then we need to stick this ends of the picture down. Okay, that's better. Right, let's go to sticking our embellishments. Now we've got the center is raised, so we can tuck these in nicely underneath the bubbles. I will just kind of randomly dot around, I think. And that's following that shape we've got on the stencil. So that is nice. I like the echoing that theme. Sort of liquidy, moving piece. I don't want that one there because that's another big one on that side. Let's have that little one there. Uh, there. <laughs> I lost it. Ooh. Oh no. Where did that go? Excuse me a second while I retrieve my bubble. But hands at the moment I keep dropping everything. 
Right, and we've got the carpet fluff. We don't want that really. Let's get rid of that. Okay, we'll go back to these cogs now. We've got those sort of big bits in. And this bit's the sort of easier, fun bit, if you like. Hope you can see everything I'm doing. And you can see the structure is really coming together now. So if you're worried in the beginning, don't be. Because towards the end, it will all come together. And then we'll finish, we'll decide if we want some paint Oops. on top of the cogs. I don't think we'll go for too much because we've got a lot in the background and I quite like the contrast of the black. So this is um, what I was saying about how black can be pretty. I think black is really useful, um, perhaps underestimated tool in our arsenal. Um, oh, I should have gessoed these on plastic. <laughs> um, yeah, black just is striking. It's very bold. Um, so it can look fantastic. And colours really pop off black. Um, I think the black kind of showcases colours. You know, it's like the night sky. Um, if if stars appeared in the daytime, they wouldn't really look so pretty, would they? But against the nice dark sky, yeah. Wow, look at the star. You know. I'll be talking rubbish now. Ugh, didn't want to do that. Right now, where am I going to put these nice pieces? Let's go for one there. Do we want a bit more gel on these because they're not even backs and they're a little bit bigger and heavier? So we want to be a bit, a bit more heavy handed with our gel. I'm using them to create this, keep with the shape. I've got like a kind of vertical movement going on now as well as a horizontal. And then our flowers. So I'll use, I like to cluster. So let's get some of the purple flowers out. Oh, this chipboard has been very naughty. Okay, something like that. And then we'll colour those white flowers a little bit. Gel is great for sticking down flowers. I find 
flowers are quite awkward to stick down at times and it will stick to fabric as well as paper because sometimes the glues don't like fabric they'll peel off again And we want to make sure to be careful not to cover that lovely clay piece we've added. Okay, looking good. Now we just need to add those touches of colours and we'll be done. How, what do we think so far ladies? Is it okay? So, I think I'm going to go with the darkest colour, the bounty. Because we've got purple in the flowers and there's a little bit. I'm going to... Now, the gel takes a while to dry, so sort of hold on to your flower while you do... If you're wanting to paint, if you're going to spray them, it's not... So much of a problem. So I've not watered that down this time. Oops, I got a little bit on there. Can I get that off? Yep. Okay. And then I'm going to dry brush onto the uh, bits of wood. So, putting it on the brush and wiping it off again. And the metals and the onto the uh, bubbles. Misbehaving cog. Now, clay. I think we'll go brighter for the clay. Shall we do that in the purple colour to make it really stand out? Got all the other bits. Try to keep the rest a bit subtle. Yeah, let's go. Let's go for straight on purple. Oh, thanks, Claire. Yeah, I think it's looking all right, isn't it? I think that's a good thing about black and more simple backgrounds as well. Sometimes um, when we go for something really full on from the beginning, you can get a bit lost and um, those really nice elements they might not stand out so much. So I'm just painting the waxes now. Uh, the clays. Oh dear. With the purple. And I'm not going in too much and what I might do is actually rub some away so that black shows underneath this is where waxes are really good
Just be careful not to break them. Okay, and I think we just need some words to finish. Um, I've got those Finnebear words, but I don't know if they're the right colours. Let's see. I think I want really white, so let's go to the Tim Holtz ones, I think. we want to say well we've got the butterflies kind of flying about bit of nature all oh, black is a great yeah give it a go claire just be brave you know i think it looks great i don't know no actually let's try these again let's look at this color uh, this might go nice with this actually this kind of, should we find one that colour? Yeah, to tie in with that. Okay, so let's see. Protect your magic. Build your wings will go nice with the picture. I think that build your wings is really appropriate for the picture. Now just to decide where to go. Build your wings. And then do we want any more down here? Maybe we'll go to the... Tim Holtz ones. We'll go for the black and white ones. Um, what do we reckon? Bar, there's an embark and adventure. We could have embark on adventure. Is there an on? Yes, okay. Embark on adventure. Where did I see it? <laughs> there. And um, these are a really great tool to have in your arsenal as well, wood booklets. So Finnebear's new ones are really nice. So you, at the beginning you've got just like words and they're in different colour kind of sheets. And then at the back there's more phrases, like longer ones. And the Tim Holtz ones are always great. Bark. Venture out like that, and then it's a bit too far. Out. Okay, and then we'll finish off with some splatters now i've got a lot of color so i think actually some black gessos flatters would be nice on top of the color so we'll use the water mister clean my paintbrush off more water and um, you may want to protect your picture at this stage especially if you're going to do that 
So you can do this on a mat as well, just take a little scoop out your gesso, add some water. If you want more small controlled splatters, try tapping something on top of the brush I don't mind the word being splattered and some white splatters would be nice on here as well I don't have my white gesso with me unfortunately This won't dry as bold, remember this is gesso. Okay. Could do is get some ink onto some plastic. And then ooh, make that into splatters. Although my paintbrush is very dirty now, so you might have to improvise a bit here. Throwing everything on the floor today. Um, let's see, just do it with my finger. Is this going to work? I don't know. Sort of. <laughs> mm, not quite. Let's try and clean this paintbrush. That's better. Okay, and I think it's done. Yeah, it's done. That's it. It just needs drying. And I'll take some proper photos and make sure that everything is stuck down properly, like this bit. It needs a bit more sticking, but that's it. I'll lift it up to show you. Now this is quite heavy, the paste is heavy, the embellishments, the embellishments are quite heavy so I would probably suggest to then back this onto some cardboard or something if you want to frame it that's going to really sag otherwise so that might be a good idea. So I hope you like that, gives you a bit more of an idea about the kit, the idea I had for it and um, that you'll try some black backgrounds, I'd really like to see it, it could be a black you can make a card, you can make a layout uh, in your art journal, just something. I'd really like to see something using black. Um, be brave. <laughs> and look, it's not scary, it looks pretty. It's a lot of colour now on top of the black. So black and metallic, so like Mika, your metallic sprays, metallic paints, look great together. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!